comes. Here he comes. Oh, <laughs> shit. Damn, son. Damn. Holy shit. Damn. Welcome back everyone, it's me Matsimus, and we're going back to my roots of the channel because a lot of you have been asking for it, talking about some military related topics because I really, that's the core structure of my channel and uh, I think I've let you guys down a little bit in not kind of relating back to it and I thought I'd dedicate some time to trying to talk about a topic that's quite uh, true to me being in the artillery as a reservist and I thought we'd discuss danger close. Now that statement danger close you may have heard in many different instances whether it be on video games or in your actual military career and you're still kind of curious as to what it actually is or maybe you've watched this absolutely amazing show of generation kill this is one of my favorite scenes actually from generation kill let's take a quick look at it i'm gonna call this one in right now sir that's a con arrow with 200 meters sir that's danger close for artillery Danger close. Sir, danger close is an artillery strike within 600 meters of a friendly position. That would be us. 200 meters, it's pretty much on top of our heads. Now, I really enjoy that scene because it's a stark reality check for those out there who may have the potential to call in for artillery if needed um, that may or may not know what that statement is and it's almost kind of like a wake-up call um, that if you don't know your job well or you don't know what you're doing then you shouldn't be given the responsibility to call in something as devastating as the firepower of artillery it's safe to say the artillery does its job very very well as a gunner I'm proud to say that uh, you know the artillery is the king of battle when it comes to putting the most heavy amount of devastating hell on an enemy force if needed be. However, if you are not competent in being able to deliver that artillery and that fire mission in a situation where you could potentially get your own people killed, it is absolutely useless to you as a battlefield tool and as an effective enemy killer because artillery can go wrong very, very quickly if not done in the correct fire discipline method. Now, I want to make a disclaimer straight away that, again, I am not a subject matter expert. Although I am a gunner of the artillery, I'm definitely in no way going to start proclaiming that I know everything about the artillery, fire missions, fire support, and all that good stuff. However, I do like to talk about little tidbits of artillery know-how and refer to online sources, you know, experience, etc. But I want to make it very clear that this is not, um, you know, subject matter reference that you should be, you know, using for training or, or using for, you know, your own general uh, knowledge. It is purely there for an informative purpose, not an educational purpose for the most part. So I want to make that very clear. So danger close then. If you've ever played, you know, war games, as I'm sure many of you on my channel have, like Medal of Honor, Battlefield, etc, etc, or many other games out there, you most definitely will notice that in those games, one way or another, the player will have to call in a danger close fire mission. Holy crap, boys! Get out of there! Ah! Usually the player will have to sit very close to the front and face the enemy, dropping rounds within their own perimeters or really, really close to them to make this dramatic effect that, you know, potentially a round's going to land on your head any minute. And of course, it makes great Hollywood and it makes, you know, great gameplay. Um, and the reality is, though, as troops on the ground, is absolutely terrifying. Um, I've been in situations where artillery has landed extremely close. Uh in Afghanistan, we did actually have rounds coming in fairly close. I'm not too sure if it was danger close specifically, because I don't know the distance. I was pretty much buttoned down inside my warrior. Uh, but it was enough to make my boots shake, that's for sure. Uh, and definitely a little terrifying. And now knowing that uh, what the artillery is capable of and being in the artillery, 
myself and knowing that things can go wrong, um, it is a little scary. Now, the fact that uh, artillery can be brought in on Danger Close is one of those things that's really subjective to how comfortable a commander is or how comfortable someone who's actually doing the forward observation uh, is bringing in those rounds and bringing in that firepower because that's truly what Danger Close means. It's how much do I want to risk bringing in fire onto an enemy to cover, support, or, you know, whatever else it may be, troops that are in contact ahead of me of my firing position. It's, uh, it's, it's a scary thing to think of because it is literally in some regard a gamble. There are obviously massive safety distances given for normal training and, you know, live firing when it comes to just practicing doing live firing. It's inherent. We have nice big boxes of uh, terrain that we can use to practice and put rounds down range without having any problems. In a combat scenario, everything is out the window, okay? When troops are in contact, it's no holes barred. And there, there's obviously still some safety margins there, but they're a lot more tight. And when I mean tight, I mean distances have been reduced. Yeah, okay. We got the splash. Check the line. Now, I'm not a forward observer or an artillery, you know, officer or someone who can designate firepower on the battlefield. However, it's pretty common sense that if you're calling in rounds to impact danger, impact zone, uh, you're going to want to make sure you know where your people are for sure. Um, and the, you know, effective firepower of that particular projectile that you're firing. And of course, if you're not comfortable for where the rounds are dropping close to you, then you would normally pull in a danger close fire mission. What? Is it though, you may ask? Well, danger close is the bracketed safety distance or the margin on which you can have between your friendly troops and where you're putting rounds down. Now, the distance between that can vary between what kind of firepower you're using, um, you know, the terrain you're in. It's, it's very, very subjective. And I'm not going to kind of quote between different militaries. I'm not going to quote my country's danger close distance, uh, but it's pretty self-explanatory between most NATO members. Um, the 600 meters for most, uh, you know, firepower is a very common uh, distance for which we use. Um, it depends though, it's, it's all dependent on the kind of things you're using. You know, if you're using a 2,000 pound bomb, it's a little different to 105 millimeter, um, you know, artillery shell. And again, I'm not going to go into the semantics of specifics here, but you may ask, why are we calling in for things so close to troops like that? If it's so risky, why do we do it? Well, it, you probably already know the answer. It's because troops are either about to be overrun or have to exfil or, or back out of a position or we never say retreat, <laughs> tactically withdraw from a position. Um, or worst case scenario, you know, troops are getting so heavily hammered that uh, they're actually, in some cases and in history, it's been seen rounds are being dropped literally on top of friendly troops almost to allow them to cover themselves from, you know, being overrun. And that is absolutely terrifying. It's terrifying for two aspects, I guess. One, as a gunner, if that's the case and it ever came over the net that you would have to put rounds on top of your own troops to protect them, it's it's it would be soul crushing for me to ever have to pull the lanyard in that kind of situation. It'd be very, very scary. Um, but in history, you know, it does happen uh, and it has happened. And, you know, the other aspect is obviously the troops on the ground being in that situation would be just horrifying um, and extremely, extremely scary knowing that you, you're you actually calling in fire upon yourself to actually, in some regard, protect yourself from troops so close that it's not even danger close anymore. It's like literally on top of you. Now, of course, risk is inherent in war. At times, a commander has got to put his soldiers in harm's way to accomplish a mission. A combatant, though, who is willing to put himself and his soldiers at necessary risk is doomed to defeat regardless of other advantages, including artillery. The current climate in the armed forces has made us very adverse to risk, and rightfully so in a peacetime environment, but even in peacetime, most maneuver commanders realize that in combat they won't use the same measures they employ in live fire training exercises to ensure the complete safety of the force. This is especially true for indirect fire and especially when using things like danger close. Each new generation of infantry commander technically is really asking for different kinds of fire support with the new technologies we have. 
For instance, they're going to ask the question, if I'm assaulting an objective, how close can my troops get before I have to turn off the mortars and the artillery? That's an extremely good question. It's actually just made of plastic. It's a toy. Three explosions, 50 yards away. So, as we were doing the interviews, incoming round just landed in this area. Some of the rebels are now starting to flee. Of course, there is no true right or wrong answer. Artillery can be brought in very, very tight with modern munitions that we have today. Precision guided weapons and even more, you know, I guess primitive forms of artillery can still even be brought in extremely tight with the right skilled crews and uh, the right skilled you know, artillery observation officers, etc. in place to do the job that they need to do. There are a lot of different, you know, articles out there explaining the different risk estimates for distances and minimum safe distances or MSDSs. Uh, and they present tables and charts and documents that kind of help commanders determine the level of risk they'll accept for covering their own assaulting soldiers with indirect fire. However, no dismounted soldier wants to assault the last 300 meters without indirect fire of some kind, providing at least some sort of suppression onto an objective. History gives us many examples of soldiers intentionally calling in artillery less than 50 meters from their positions and surviving. However, we are not in full-blown conflict nowadays. We're not going up against the Russians. We're not going up against the Vietnamese in sort of these large-scale infantry rush attacks where artillery is really most effective in these sort of danger-close fire mission situations. When Danger Close is called, though, it is something that is taken very seriously on the gun line. The fact that the, you know, troops on the ground are calling something so close to them that if an error or mistake is made, it could take their lives is, uh, is like I've mentioned it earlier in the video, is terrifying. So that's it for today, everyone. I hope you learned a little bit about the Danger Close fire missions and what they can entail. Of course, there's no real specifics to Danger Close in this video, and I don't want to get too technical on it because, as I mentioned, I'm not a subject matter expert, and I want to make sure that I'm not making this more of an educational sort of purpose video because I know a lot of people have asked me, hey, can I use this for my... Uh, you know, my, my project or whatever else I said, you got to be careful because this is purely just a kind of a background, an overview of what Danger Close is. And, you know, it's very relevant to a lot of my different videos. You know, this isn't, uh, you know, for sure hearsay, uh, subject matter, perfect, detailed information. It's just a kind of a, a background uh, sort of rundown, give you a little bit of an idea of what Danger Close is and, you know, other military topics and discussions we've had in the past. The same thing applies. Anyway, thank you all so much for hanging out today. I hope you're enjoying uh, this video and the military content's going to start popping back into the stream. Uh, YouTube is still kind of killing me right now, unfortunately, everyone. Um, you know, they keep saying that uh, a non-monetized channel is not uh, affected in the analytics. It's not affected in the way it's showcased on the channel and, you know, related videos and all that sort of stuff. I, I just don't buy it whatsoever. There's a lot of different people I've been speaking to, different channels larger than mine, who totally agree with me that, you know, their channels have been blacklisted due to this new algorithm flagging all these, you know, uh, channels with all content that's going against all YouTube's policies, etc. It's a, it's a, you know, a pandemic almost on the YouTube front. It's, it's really upsetting. Uh, however, I'm still sticking strong and I'm here to entertain you folks and I enjoy doing so, so I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, I have been looking into doing a lot more on Twitch recently, so if you haven't checked out my Twitch, folks, please go into the description box below. If you haven't got Twitch, grab a Twitch account because trust me, there's going to be a lot more live streams in the future. Um, we'll be doing actually some potentially some uh, some vlogs and some sort of podcasts um, with other military members out there in the world who we can kind of discuss military content with. I heard that the Cab Show is coming back. If you know what the Cab Show is, it's going to be really interesting. It's kind of a military, I guess, uh, podcast group. They're a really nice bunch of people, including Dalek, uh, who's uh, you know an awesome YouTuber. He's he's been following me for quite some time. Um, so yeah, please go check out Twitch. I'm going to be definitely transferring a lot of my content onto Twitch in the near future. Um, if you want to support my channel, you have a few options. You can go check out my Patreon page, which is in the description box below again. And thank you to every single one of you who have been uh, donating towards my Patreon. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, you can also come to the Discord Legion server, which is our chat room slash kind of gaming room or just general chit chat and banter room. I'd really appreciate you come check out there. There is a bit of a uh, holding period before we can get in there. Don't be deterred. It's a good 
good server. You can come hang out, have a chat. Um, we've kind of revamped it a little bit in terms of the Legion uh, ranking structure, which is a little bit more interesting and fun than what we had in the past. But I'd love to come hang out and chat with you folks on there. So feel free to stop by. I'm always on there having a shindig and chat with people. Uh, I do have Facebook as well. And if you want to check out my merchandise store, you're more than welcome to, again, by clicking on the link in the description box below. I will be doing an unboxing video for those who have been sending me stuff through the mail to my fan mail postal box. Thank you so much for sending me stuff. Uh, just really haven't had the time to get around to unbox it yet. I will get around to it, I promise you. But if any of you do want to send me anything in the mail, you're more than welcome to by, once again, checking out my P.O. Box address in the description box below. And uh, I'll try my best to unbox anything you send me. And once again, thank you in advance. And for those who already sent me stuff uh, for doing so. All the best, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And uh, splash. Bye-bye.